Okay, so in this video, we are going to continue having fun with the Cricut Joy Extra. If you missed the unboxing of this, I will place a link to that video down below in the description box. Now in the last video, when we were unboxing this machine together and doing some crafts, I had you vote on whether you wanted to do stickers or the card mat next. Now I'm doing both videos, but those supplies haven't come in yet. Well, the card mat um, is here, but stickers got a higher vote. So stickers are coming. I am just waiting for them to be delivered. I need the materials. My local store did not have them. So in the meantime, we're still gonna have fun. We are going to do this new product that came out from Cricut. I bought this and it arrived just yesterday. This is a printable iron-on for light fabrics. And they also do have this for dark fabrics as well. So that's something you're going to want to pay attention to when you are selecting which one to purchase. Okay. It also says here that it is for the Cricut Maker and the Cricut Explore and the Cricut Joy Extra. Okay. So it is for print and cut cutting machines. So that would omit the original Cricut Joy, but the Cricut Maker, the Explore, and the Cricut Joy Extra that we'll be using today all have the print and cut feature so we can do this craft. Okay, so this is a printable iron-on, which is so exciting. So I have this shirt here. I just purchased this from Michaels. It's a nice cream shirt and I have a fun design that I'm really excited to show you and to work with. So I have never used this, so we're gonna go ahead and learn together. And the whole idea of this is that we are going to have an image that we print out on our printer, on an inkjet printer, and then we can send it through the Cricut Joy Extra to cut out. Then we will go ahead and iron it onto the shirt. So let's see if there's anything else we need to know on the back before we get started. Okay, so we can create designs for t-shirts, totes, and home decor for use with inkjet printers to print and cut with your Cricut machine. And it includes five US letter sheets and these are in white. And then there is also a pressing sheet. Okay, and another thing we need to do is because I just unboxed this, I need to calibrate my machine and we will do that together before we do print and cut. Now it's very important that you calibrate your machine before you do print and cut. Calibrating is what's going to help your machine cut very accurately. So you wanna make sure it's calibrated before you do a print and cut project. Okay, let's see what all of this is. So this must be, well, let me double check. I'm thinking all of this is, one, two, three, four, five. So these must be the printable iron-on sheets, okay? And then this must be the pressing sheet, which kind of looks to me to be kind of like a parchment paper, okay? I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is, but it seems to be something of that nature. Okay, so this is the product we're going to use. I'm gonna set my shirt to the side, and the first thing we need to do is go into Cricut Design Space, and we need to get our whole design ready so that we can print it out on our printer. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so I'm in Cricut Design Space. One thing I need to do is I need to come up to my machine selection. I am up in the upper right-hand corner and I need to click that and I need to select Cricut Joy Extra. And I'm only doing that because that's the machine that I'm working with. So you'll just wanna make sure that if you're using this product with another machine that does print and cut, then you will select the machine you're using up here. Okay, so I have an image that I uploaded. So I'm gonna to go to my upload button. Now I'm over on the left-hand side. At the time of recording this, now Cricut always is improving and redoing their software. So some of these buttons, if you're watching in the distant future, they may switch around or look different, but at the time of recording, the upload button is the second from the bottom on the left right over here. So I'm gonna click that and then I'm going to look for the design that I'm going to use. I am going to use this fun design. This is so adorable and I really wanted this on a t-shirt. So I'm gonna click on it to select it and then I can go ahead and go to the bottom right button and say add to canvas. Okay, now sometimes it takes, if the design is a little bit larger, it takes a minute to load. That actually went pretty quickly. Now, the first thing that I want you to see over here, now this is huge, right? This is 20 inches by 22 inches. But the first thing I want you to notice is that we have over on our file, 
we have an icon here and this is a red alert button and this is letting us know that as is it's way too big to cut with the Cricut Joy Extra, which is very obvious, right? It's 20 inches, that's way too big. So I'm gonna click on this icon, and if you ever want to know the actual dimensions that you can cut, you will have that right here. And I always love to click on these because I never remember this, right? So it's saying here, the image is too large for the eight and a half by 11 letter paper. We have detected that the max size for this shape is, and then it tells you the max size that you can do, okay? So what I'm going to do is instead of copying, pasting this or trying to over here reduce this, Cricut has a new button, which is so exciting. I have never used this before, but this button you can click and it will just automatically auto size it. And this is going to size it appropriately so that it is going to work with the machine that you're using. So I'm gonna say auto resize image. Okay, and there it goes. So now I have my image here. Now, if I were to go and make that bigger, let's see if I can make it bigger without the alert coming. So I'm wondering if, you know, it said it detected. Oh, there we go. See, I made it just a little bit bigger and then it is now too big. Okay, so I'm going to, so it ended up actually allowing me to make that just a little bit bigger. So if you do auto resize your image, see if you can play around and make it just a tad bigger because again, that feature is just kind of detecting what the largest size would be okay so now i'm just kind of making that it's a little bit smaller until that alert turns off okay and quite honestly i need to actually pause here because what i want to do next is i'm going to create a little offset around my image okay and the reason that i want to do that is because i don't want my cricut cutting out all of these delicate little pieces but instead i want it to cut out a little bit more substantial pieces so that it is easier to place on my shirt. And you'll see all that play out in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up to this button. It's in the top bar of Cricut Design Space and it's called Offset. I'm gonna click that and it's automatically going to apply an offset that is a quarter of an inch, okay? So we'll just let that load really quickly and then we're gonna see what a quarter of an inch looks like. And I have a feeling we're gonna drastically reduce that because I don't think we need that much. Okay, so there is what a quarter of an inch looks like, and that's actually not too bad. So what you see in the blue line is where the Cricut would cut that out. And I am going to see if I can just reduce this just a little bit. I'm gonna go maybe um, 0.15, and let's see what that does. So I clicked enter on my keyboard, and it's just going to take a moment to apply that. Okay, and I kind of like that because it's a little bit thinner. So what I can do now is I can say apply. Okay. And then there is my offset. Okay. So now I'm going to take my offset and I'm going to go up to the color area up here. I'm going to click that and I'm going to pick just a color that is not necessarily white. I want it to be an off white color that way it kind of just fits with the image a little bit better. So I could even go to advanced and maybe search for like a cream or something like that. Let me just kind of play around here and see what I can find. See, even something like that would be kind of nice. And my shirt's cream. So I'm just wanting it to kind of ma not match my shirt because obviously that would be kind of, um, I feel like that'd be almost impossible, right? <laughs> to color match your shirt, but I just don't want it to be white. Okay, I want it to match a little bit more. Okay, I think that looks about right. So I'm gonna click off of there. Okay, the next thing and the most important thing that you need to do is take both layers. So you're gonna select both and you'll see in the layers panel that now both are selected because they're both highlighted. Come down to the very bottom and you're going to select flatten. And it's super important that you do that because now you have created essentially one image and then your Cricut will cut around that border right there. Okay, we're all set. So now we can go up into the right corner, make sure we have the machine we're using selected and click make it. Okay, and then there is the preview of my design on the print and cut page. 
Okay, so it is indicating that it is a print and cut project. It's going to use an eight and a half by 11 inch letter size paper, and we can go ahead and click continue. So now what I can do is on the next page, it's going to allow me to start sending it to my printer, but before that, it has a little pop-up that says that we need to calibrate the machine. This is brand new. You used to have to go and actually prompt Cricut Design Space to walk you through the process to calibrate your machine, but now they have a pop-up, which is great. Now it does let you bypass it, but don't bypass it. Calibrate your machine. Don't waste your material getting an inaccurate cut because you didn't calibrate. And it's so easy. I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. So I'm gonna click calibrate, and then it's going to just send it right to my printer. So I can say print. Okay, and then this is what came off of my printer. Now this is, just printer paper. So don't print this on your nice iron-on or any of your other nice Cricut products. Just put this on printer paper. So now I'm going to place this on a mat and we are going to begin the calibration process. So now I just have, let me shut this for a minute just so I have more working space, but I have my light grip mat and I have my sheet. Now I'm going to do no cutting. This entire piece is going to go right on my cutting mat. It wants me to align it, and take your time here, you want it to be aligned perfectly. I'm gonna align it in the top left-hand corner, which is essentially the entire <laughs> mat. Okay, and there we go. So now it is ready to go. Okay, now it is prompting me to load my mat into my machine, and I'm just gonna bring this really far out so we can really watch this now. Actually, why don't I just do... Okay, so let's go ahead and load the mat. Make sure this doesn't bump into the cord. Okay. And you're gonna want to have your fine point blade loaded for this. And then in Cricut Design Space, it just has me click go to begin the calibration process. So now what it's doing is it's using the sensor, a little kind of flashlight will come on. I don't wanna move the machine because I don't wanna mess it up, but there's a little sensor that is now reading those lines. So it is locating where this outer line is, okay? Now without unloading my machine, what it's doing is it's asking me, my blade went ahead and cut a line or a square along this inner square here. And it wants me to make sure that the cut line is actually on the square. And if it is, I can say yes. And if it's not, I can say no. Mine is close, but it's not perfect. And I can't lift it up because I don't want to ruin the calibration, but you'll see on your own, you'll see the cut lines on this first inner square. So I'm gonna go ahead and say no because it wasn't quite perfect. And then I can say continue. Now what it's doing is it's using the blade and it is going along the lines up at the top and it is making some cut lines. And then it went ahead and continued and did the cut lines along the right side as well. Okay, now that that is done, it says without unloading anything, you're going to examine the lines on the top and then the right side. And you're going to look and examine each one to see which cut goes through the actual line, okay? So I'm gonna do that up here. So I'm gonna go through and I see that number 11, now this is for my machine, okay? Yours might be different and that's completely fine. I'm gonna look through for my machine in front of me, number 11 goes the closest through, okay? So, I'm going to select number 11. Then I'm gonna to go to the right side and I'm going to look at all of them and I notice for my machine that it is closest on the M. So I'm going to go into design space and select M and then do continue. Okay, so now it's saying the basic calibration is complete and it's going to print another calibration sheet to review the changes. Okay, so I'm gonna unload my mat at this point. Okay, and then I can print a new calibration sheet just by selecting print. So while that's printing, I'm going to remove my mat or turn it over and 
just remove the paper from the mat very gently. Okay, and I have my new sheet here. And I'm wondering if I'm having to do it twice because my first little cut, I told it it wasn't perfect. So maybe that's why it's having me do it one more time just to make sure that the first calibration really helped. Okay, let me go ahead and load this in. And it's just gonna redo what it did that first time, okay? So it's doing the sensors and then it's going to start the cutting. Okay, so it's cutting that inner square so much better this time. Okay, so now I can actually say yes, that it is cutting really well and accurately. So then I can continue. And now it's going to do the top lines and the side lines, okay? So this is really exciting because that first calibration did work in making it even more accurate because now I'm noticing on my second calibration run through that it is cutting very accurately. And it's so important you do this because then your machine is going to cut with extreme precision and accuracy it's just worth the step. And honestly, it's gonna take you about five minutes. It really will, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same steps and I'm gonna go through and see which one is the most accurate up in the numbers, the top, and then also along the side. So along the top, my most accurate one is number 12 and that cut is going right through the line. So I'm going to select number 12. I already can tell that it's more accurate than last time. And then down the side, the most accurate one for me is N and that's going right through the line. So I'm going to select N and say continue. Okay, now it is cutting along that outer rectangle and without unloading it, it's going to have me examine this cut in this inner rectangle, right? Not the outer one, but this one closest to our little square. And it wants me to see if it cut in the middle. And by golly, it did. Okay, so I can say, yes, it is close enough to center. And I can click continue and it says calibration is complete. Nice work, it says. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so now I can say unload and we have calibrated the machine. So easy. Okay, so now it's time to do our actual project. I'm so excited. I really am excited to see this turn out. So I'm going to remove this and now, oops, I gotta go careful, 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 because it has all those little cuts. Okay, so now this is what I'm gonna bring in the printable iron on. So I am going to go over to my printer and I am going to load this into my printer. Now you want to make sure every printer is different, right? You want to know, make sure that you know how to load your printable vinyl into your printer so that it prints on this side and not this side. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and load this into my printer. That way I can say send to printer and it will print out my design onto the printable vinyl. Okay, so now I have a printable vinyl loaded in my printer and now I can just say send to printer. So now it's going to show me just a print preview. This is my printer. I really, you guys, I don't have anything special at all. This, it's just our home printer. It's the same printer that I print all of my kids' permission slips on and things like that. So this is just a home printer and that's what I'm going to print it out on. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the bleed and I'm going to leave that on. It's actually auto on. It's automatically turned on right now. So you can toggle that off if you want. I would recommend just keeping it on. If you have any more questions about what that is, you can go over to the little info icon and it'll tell you exactly what that does. So bleed extends the ink slightly beyond the border of the image to eliminate a white margin once the image is cut. So what that means is do you see where and it's hard because it's cream but you see where this cream line is what it's going to do is it's going to print it a little bit more along the whole outer edge that way when it goes to cut if for any reason it doesn't cut completely accurately it's going to have a little buffer in there so that it doesn't have any of the white so they're just doing a little bit more ink that way it just kind of gives you a buffer okay now I can just say print Okay, and then there it is coming off of my printer. Look how pretty that printed. It did a really great job and I love the colors.
And again, this is just our home printer. Now, one thing I want to mention is look how close my color matching turned out. I think that's gonna turn out really cute. I'm, I got a little lucky there. Okay, now I'm going to take my printable iron on, okay? And now we're gonna do print and cut. So I'm going to place this right onto my mat. Now, you're gonna place the whole sheet. Don't do any cutting. You wanna make sure that you keep all of these little black lines because that is how your Cricut Joy Extra is gonna know where your image is located. Your Joy Extra is going to scan these little lines in the four corners. Now I'm not gonna touch this because I don't want to accidentally smear any ink. It, it looks really dry, but I'm just gonna be cautious. So I'm gonna use my brayer tool and make sure that my fingers don't touch it. At least not right away. Okay, so I'm just flattening that down and I am ready to go. So now I can go right back into Cricut Design Space and browse all materials. And I'm going to go down to the iron-on section. And I, again, I'm using printable iron-on light. Now there are two different products. There's the light and the dark, depending on what type of fabric you're putting it on. Again, I'm doing a light colored shirt, so I purchased the light version. I'm gonna go ahead and flag this, that way I can do this again and not have to go through and search for this specific cut setting, especially because I have four additional sheets, so I'm gonna be using this at least four more times. Okay, and then I have it selected. You can see the green little check mark and I can say done. Okay, so now we're gonna use our fine point blade. We can load our mat in and we can officially do print and cut on the Cricut Joy Extra. Okay, so I'm just bringing this down a little bit because I wanna make sure that my mat doesn't bump into my computer or anything like that and I can load my mat just like that. Now remember, the Joy does not have any buttons on it. It's buttonless, so anything that you're going to do will be in Cricut Design Space. So once it's all ready to go, I am going to go into Cricut Design Space. The go button will appear and I can just click go. So now it is just using that little scanner, that built-in scanner that it has. I call it the little flashlight scanner. And it's going to go ahead and scan all four corners where those little black lines are. And because we calibrated, this is going to cut beautifully. Okay, now that it has scanned for the four corners, it knows where the image is located and it will begin cutting. All right, and now it is cutting around the border. It's doing so well and you'll see once we remove the iron on from the mat, that that bleed feature was perfect. So make sure you keep that on. It doesn't hurt anything and it really ensures that you get a nice clean edge when it does the cutting. All right, it is already all done. Easy peasy. Okay, so now in Cricut Design Space, I can just click unload. Now I wanna make sure that this did cut through. So, oh yeah, it did. I was just kind of testing to make sure it cut all the way through. So now that I know it did cut through, I can just say unload. My mat is all unloaded, and now we can go ahead and get this all prepped for the shirt. Isn't that neat? I don't know if you can see the cut line. You will, though, once I, I think you can kind of see it right there. Do you see how that bleed line, you know, it adds that extra ink so that it cuts beautifully. Okay, let's go ahead. I need to see about some heat setting. Okay, so I am on the Cricut Heat Guide. I'm gonna select the Cricut Easy Press 2 because that's what I will use. And then for the heat transfer material, I am going to scroll all the way down to printable iron-on for light fabrics. Then for my base material, I will say 100% cotton or you'll just select whatever material you're putting it on. I'll indicate that I am using a pressing mat and click apply. Then it will tell me my time and temperature that I will need. Okay, one thing that's interesting is that it says pre-washed without fabric softener. So go ahead and pre-wash your shirt before you do this. Okay, so here is my Easy Press 2. Go ahead and turn that on and I will place my temperature at 315. 
I will select a time duration for 30 seconds and then this will chime and it will turn green once it has reached that temperature that we indicated. So I'm gonna set this to the side and let's bring in our shirt and begin prepping that. Okay, we gotta make some room. So I'm gonna move you off to the side here and let's move this as well. I have a pressing pad here. I did make my own. So if you want to learn how to do that, I'll place a video where I walk you through it. It's so easy and it's fun because you can kind of personalize it to your own craft room and personality. Okay, so here is my shirt. Okay, and what I'm going to do Make sure that that's nice and straight on my mat. For some reason, if I get it really centered on my mat, it just helps me down the road get my design all centered. So I take the time to do that. It looks good. Maybe I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. Okay, so there is my shirt. Now, while my heat press is preheating, I'm going to take it and just run it over my shirt and make sure that I pre-press the shirt. This is going to make sure there's no moisture in the shirt. And if you have any wrinkles, it gets it all nice and wrinkle free. Okay, just about five to 10 seconds. And you only need to focus on the area where you're gonna place your design. Okay, let me remove that. And now I'm just gonna take a lint roller and make sure I remove any lint that is on the surface. Okay. And we are almost to temperature. So in the meantime, I guess what I do, let me weed out the little tiny middle pieces. Do you see these little white areas? It cut around those. So let me weed those out with a weeding tool. Okay, I have my little weeding tools here. And I'm gonna be careful not to scratch, you know, the ink or anything, but I will go through and remove all those little pieces because I don't want to iron those onto my shirt. And wherever we remove, we'll just see shirt behind there. So I'm just gonna collect these to the side. I did one right here, I believe. And let's go ahead and do the surrounding area. So now I'm just gonna weed out the surrounding area. Okay. There we go. And you can see, I'll hold this up in a moment, but you'll see that little bleed line that's on this leftover piece. It's kind of hard because I had a really um, light fabric, so you might not even be able to see that, but it just shows that it cut right in between that. So now do I just pull this gently off with my fingers? Let me take it off the mat. And my heat press is ready to go. I feel like the printable iron-ons that I've used in the past, I just gently peeled off. Now I know that you wanna make sure your shirt, okay, let's pause. Your shirt needs to be very cool before you attempt this part. Because if you put this freestanding design onto a warm surface, it is going to curl up. I remember that from the last time I did that. That was several years ago. I made my daughter an Elsa and Anna shirt with printable vinyl and I had it all ready to go. I peeled it up, but my shirt was still really warm and it just kind of rolled into itself. Okay, so make sure your, um, your project is cool. Okay, so I guess, I guess you just are gentle here makes me incredibly nervous because I don't want to stretch it. So I'm just gently peeling this up. Hopefully I'm doing this right. So I'm looking on my heat guide. It says remove printed design from liner and place design print side up on the cotton. Okay, well, that indicates what I'm doing, I suppose. I suppose I'm doing it right. I'm being very careful though, because you know, this is a really stretchy material and I do not want to stretch it and distort it. 
So go slow here. And now you can see why I really also wanted to have that offset around this because could you imagine having all of these tiny little pieces? That would be maddening. Okay, there we go. So then I guess I just place this on my shirt. Oh, look at the color match there. Wow, that was that was lucky. Okay, and then you can see my shirt poking through all those little inside pieces. Very cute. Now, if you didn't want all these little insides, you could just make that offset bigger because I think when it did the, um, like the auto offset at that 0.25, I don't think it had any of the, the little parts. That doesn't bother me though. And I didn't want too much bulky surrounding area. I kind of like this nice and thin, but wow, that looks nice. Okay, so I think we're ready to place that on our shirt. Okay, and that looks center to me, but since we've worked so hard so far, let's not mess it up right now. Six and a half and six and a half. Okay, we are at center. That looks good visually up, um, right up at the top. So now we're going to place our liner, our protective sheet, and that was included in the pack of printable iron-on. We're gonna place that right on top. Okay, I'm just double checking the stacking order to make sure that I did this correctly. So pressing that, yes. Then we have the shirt, then we have the iron-on design, and then the protective sheet, and then the easy press. Okay, so now it does say to use firm pressure. So I'm gonna place my press right over and select go. Again, 315. Ooh, that liner makes it slippery. 315 for 30 seconds. And I like to stand when I'm doing firm pressure. That way I can kind of put all of my all of my body weight into pressing down on the easy press. Okay, so we're about halfway there. One thing it does say. Okay, there we go. Now I can just remove my easy press. Remove my liner. Oh, it kind of made it a little more interesting. The color changed. Huh. Well, that kind of is a little bit of a bummer because it was like really accurate how I printed it. It's almost like it gave it like a big vibrant boost. The saturation is definitely bumped up. However, it is on there. Isn't that interesting? Let me know if you've used this and if it has done the same for you. Darn, because do you see my color matching for that outline? It was perfect. Huh, super interesting. And I did the time and temp that they said, so I followed all of the directions. Okay, so for care instructions, it does say to make sure you allow 48 hours after you apply your iron on, allow 48 hours before washing, and then you're gonna wash inside out in cold water and hang dry and don't bleach. All of that is on the heat pressing section down at the bottom where it says care. So if you forget what the care instructions are, you can just look those up. Okay, so there is my shirt. Okay, and so there is how you do printable iron-on and print and cut projects with the Cricut Joy Extra. So we learned a lot. We learned how to calibrate the machine, which now, once you've calibrated your machine, you shouldn't have to redo it unless you start noticing that it's not cutting accurately, and then you can try recalibrating. But calibration really is only for print and cut projects and not for just regular cutting, if that makes sense. So I hope you enjoyed this and found this helpful. I will say I'm a little disappointed that the color kind of changed at the end and I'm really confused on why that is because this definitely is a light fabric. So I know I purchased the correct material for this. So I'm a little confused on why that happened, um, especially because I followed all of the instructions where I was doing the exact pressure and time and temp. So I don't know, I'm a little confused by that. Kind of disappointed just because I really liked the original color, but it's really on there and it's really, really nice. So it's exciting to know that we can do that.
All right, everyone, let me know if you have given this a try. Let me know if you came into the same dilemma that I did with the color kind of boosting in saturation after the heat was applied. Super interesting. Okay, I just can't let it go that it did um, some discoloring at the very end. So I have this little cotton tote. I also have my little design again. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but what I thought I would do is just kind of cut out a corner of this and test it on this little tote because it's already not sized correctly so I'm just going to do a little test here all right so let's just test this out I'm going to preheat do all of the normal things I looked up the temperature and the time it's the same as it was for the cotton so we're all set there I'm literally just going to peel this off this little tote was a dollar 99 so I I'm okay with I, I'm going to just go ahead and use it for the sake of testing because I'm just way too curious and I want you to know as well. So I'm just going to peel this off. Again, I'm just doing a little corner here. Okay. Now I also will grab the liner. Okay. And then let's just press this on. I'm going to see if I do just kind of regular pressure. I'm not sure. Maybe just kind of regular pressure to see if that helps. I have no idea, but it's worth just testing once more. Again, I'm putting this on a light fabric. So we're testing it on something even lighter than the cream. This is a very, very bright white tote bag. Oops, I put that heat on the, um, handles. I really like to avoid those because they're kind of that weird plasticky. Okay, so it did the exact same thing. And in fact, it does need the pressure because I can tell it didn't press on as well. Okay, so here is the color difference. Pre-press and then once it's pressed. And I know in sublimation that everything gets vibrant as you're pressing it, but I didn't see anywhere that that was the case with the printable iron-on. So super interesting. Okay, well, I just wanted to test that just to make sure because that was just kind of stumping me on why that would happen. Let me know down in the comments if you are noticing a boost in saturation and vibrancy when you are pressing onto your project. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be doing stickers and we're gonna be doing the pens through the Cricut Joy Extra. And then I also want to explore the card mat. So if you are joining for the first time, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out those videos that are coming up. And be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. All right, everyone, I'll see you soon.